hello everybody welcome to another goggles goes to Europe and uh, well <laughs> we're kind of getting close on this darn skin I've decided to not fuss with those rear fenders anymore I'm just gonna paint them solid and I put a scanny thing on the back and uh, no it's getting close I'm just got to figure out all the details a few little things to go yet uh, one of the visors etc but anyway let's uh, let's get going here we're in Reykjavik Reykjavik, Reykjavik, and we're out here on the port or harbor here, which is kind of cool. And we're going to head across the island, and uh, we're going to Akuria. <laughs> don't know how to pronounce it, in all honesty, but uh, something like that. And uh, let's uh, we'll hop in and get going. Got this tractor on here. It's a normal delivery. It's not urgent. It's pretty big, so I'll throw the beacons on. Fairly wide, that is. Turn right. Uh, let's see, twenty-nine thousand five hundred forty-one pounds. I sort of see a bit of this harbor here. And stay on the road. At the roundabout, take the second exit. Trying a different mirror uh, than the last time. Take the exit now. This one has the uh, convex mirror on the uh, driver's side. We just don't have that backup mirror up in the in the middle. But uh, I can live without it. The roundabout take the third exit. Take the exit now. Turn left. I was getting all set to go straight there. <laughs> Keep right, then take the exit on the right. Take the exit on the right. Iceland to me, it's a pretty fascinating place. When, uh, just for a couple reasons. Keep One, left. I wish I knew more, more about it. The few you know, things I do know about it are, uh, you know, I used to be really into uh, aviation. Not that I'm, you know, not anymore. I, I still keep in touch with what's going on. But there was a time when I was seriously considering getting my pilot's license. And I was all set to sell my vintage caddy and pay for it and everything. And, and I was reading, you know, three or four different aviation monthly magazines for years, you know, and just really keeping up on it, doing all my time in the Microsoft flight sims and going for real flights, grabbing the wheel whenever I could, the control yoke as it were, and uh, I've actually have flown a few different airplanes in my life, including some World War II trainers, but one of the things that used to happen a lot at that time was uh, I used to watch um, a guy on YouTube who's or was it YouTube? It was not the Speed Channel, maybe, when there was a Speed Channel before that went away. And they had a dude on, and he had a half-hour show, and he used to ferry a lot of uh, aircraft around. And one of the flights that he did quite frequently was taking aircraft from North America to Europe. And he would fly, you know, the uh, uh, Gander, Newfoundland to Reykjavik leg, and then on to Ireland. And uh, I used to just eat that stuff up. I loved it. And that's where I first... At the roundabout, take the second exit. ...realized I really wanted to know more about Iceland, but never really did move beyond that curiosity. Take the exit now. 
curiosity face, but uh, pretty neat, pretty neat place. And then <laughs> since then, the other thing that uh, happened is a few uh, go straight episodes on uh, uh, Top Gear, where they did a few little episodes of Iceland were interesting. And then I got into watching the uh, Icelandic uh, off-road guys go mental with those uh, their uh, highly modified four-wheel drive jeeps and stuff and the crazy stuff they were doing, uh, you know, crossing water with them and some of their competitions are insane, like how difficult it is and the terrain they're on is this, you know, volcanic black rock dirt whatever you want to call it and if you haven't seen it uh, I, I don't know it's just search Icelandic uh, off-road or Icelandic 4x4 or something it's insane you'll be really impressed these guys are man they're committed and uh, yeah, I guess it's the equivalent to in uh, North America you have these guys tackling the impossible terrain and those things like it's oh man I'm telling you it's impressive at the roundabout take the first exit take the exit now but anyway and then on top of all that I always wondered well what what do they how does what's the industry here and uh, how how's the population like what do they you know I, I imagine there's banking and high tech and things like that but what are the resources uh, what do they is there mining or is there a forestry industry what what's going on how to where does the general population derive their living in this sort of remote and isolated community they have? Always really uh, like to know more. At the roundabout, take the first exit. They have to be a pretty industrious slot, and uh, they've done well. Take well, the exit now. And anything I know about the country, they're uh, a pretty uh, organized lot, that's for sure. Anyway, here we are. Iceland. I gotta do another tire test one of these days. Do a tire test in ETS. Maybe a rain one as well. Wet weather tire test. Go straight. That'd be fun. I really enjoy doing that in ATS. You can look it up in my tutorials playlist. Looks like we might run into some snow here. Wonder how this truck is in the snow with these tires. Just might find out.
like Rob Grimes Frosty Winter with the uh, dry roads turned on. I have to remove that darn outside mirror on the right side there. So we got another uh, guy with a similar load up there ahead of us. That's what it looks like out here right now. We've got about that much snow in the ground, maybe a little more, and uh, the roads uh, got a little bit warm there, and the uh, roads have cleared off since the last snowfall. Well, we're just zipping through these regions. same cargo. Probably that same trailer, let's see. Yeah. It's like we're ganging up to do a multiple delivery. I kind of think it'd be entertaining in the game if you're following a guy like this down the road. He's got the same cargo, and he's going to the same place you're going to. And I realize it'd be a bit much, but if the AI drove into where you're going, and you had to wait for him to offload his load, I mean, that happens in real life a lot. Like, I mean, you're not just waltzing in everywhere and first up at the loading dock or uh, with the um, shipper receiver. Quite often he's going to tell you, okay, well, hang on, park over there while we take care of this guy. And you know, in the game here, it's like your first come, first serve every time. We should pass this guy. Is this an opportunity? Oh, he's getting going now. Oh, man, it looks good, though. Let's see what happens. Maybe we can scare this car out of the way. It's a long straight, according to my map. Yeah. Gotta get her woed up a bit here. Oh. Roads get. I guess that's that's supposed to be snow on there now. We'll find out soon enough if we uh, start to lose front end grip here. We gotta slow down a little. Uh oh, yeah, it's a little slippery right there. I got my right wheel off into that. here. We're okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
arrows. Oh. At the roundabout, take the second exit. Take the exit now. Oh, a little gap in the train there at that bridge. thrive here. I, li I like the uh, energy situation with the, uh, the uh, I, I don't know what do you call it, Therm the thermal springs or whatever. Uh, that volcanic activity underground warming up uh, whatever water is under there and they're able to tap into that and have a, a heating source for their homes. Pretty, pretty good. It's been a long time, but I saw a documentary on it once, on, uh, and they were showing quite a bit about it, and man, that landscape was just inhospitable looking. It was uh, uh, pretty, pretty amazing, but it was really cool what they were doing. One of my cousins has gone here uh, quite a few times. It's a, like a vacation destination to go and just explore and hike and do cool stuff. And uh, she's always uh, really enjoyed it. And we seem to be climbing a bit again. In 50 feet, turn right. Oh boy, 50 feet. Well, that's down there a little bit. Man. Fifty feet, that's more like two hundred and fifty feet. Turn right.
that jive, so that's what my dash says. Yeah, it says three degrees out. Oh no, wait a minute, does it? That's not the right screen. One of these has got to have it. Not seeing it. Kind of looks like that area where they were harvesting the uh, the uh, energy. Oh, slippery, slippery, slippery! really crazy drive once. I used to have a little, uh, an 85 BMW 535. It was a great car. Man, it was good. And uh, I had it hopped up. I had a Turner Performance chip in it. And, uh, the uh, short shift uh, shifter mod and nice little alloy wheels and high speed Yokohama tires. And, oh, it was a blast. It was a lot of fun. Um, but anyway, uh, when I went to, I got the uh, five-speed for my caddy, a Tremec. I ordered it. Back then, I didn't have a broker at the border. My brother did in Manitoba. And so uh, I got him to, uh, we, I had the uh, transmission shipped from Hearst uh, Driveline to uh, his broker in North Dakota. And... Uh, and I went down to his place in Manitoba to pick it up. It was it was just like this out, and it was that ice. I mean, there had been an ice storm, and the road was just, the Trans-Canada Highway was just ice. And uh, it was like you could see these lines on it where a grader had gone along and scraped these ridges into the, the road. And I've got photos of it. <laughs> but anyway, long story short, there's nobody on the road, and I'm a little bit nuts when I'm on my own in a vehicle and I decided well man, you know I got get there right so let's fly and I was going like 75 miles an hour on this stuff and it was just you know I had my just finger and thumb on the steering wheel just yeah I could, not gripping the steering wheel at all because I mean you didn't want to you know if you flinched or anything you were going to go off and uh, it was just a question of just my neat finger control and just keeping the thing pointed in the in the direction you generally want to go and uh, on the long downhills you would get up speed because you couldn't push the throttle like you were going to go around they could mean I had some posse I got high speed Yokohama summer tires on <laughs> and uh, and then there'd be the long climbs up and uh, You'd have to get going as fast as you could on the way down and just keep leading the throttle off on the way up so you weren't uh, putting any uh, torque into the tires and spin it around. I mean, you'd be off the highway in a, in a shot. And uh, you'd bleed it down. You'd you know, have to shift down and just gently as could be and never really get into the throttle. And uh, that was quite the adventure. By the time you'd be going up the other side of one of these things, you'd be uh, down to like 45 miles an hour, just trying to never put any kind of power to the rear tires that's going to take you off the road. It was quite the adventure. But uh, we made it. <laughs> Well, fortunately, you know, I left early in the morning. It's an 1,100-kilometer trip, and, then, you know, I do it in a day. So uh, I left early, and by the time I got, I think, four hours into the trip, the sun was up, and uh, it started to melt. And uh, so I'd say, I'm trying to think in kilometers, 
probably about 375, 425 kilometers in. All the drama was over. But boy, what a white knuckler. I should put photos of that on my Discord. I think I will. But uh, yeah, it was quite an adventure. That little car was great. But um, when my wife's dad passed away, he had a Jimmy that was always garaged. Uh, it was a 2004 Jimmy. And uh, there's a 2002, I forget. 2002? And uh, we inherited it. And we couldn't have so many cars. Like, I got the old caddy. I have my BMW. Barb's got a Miata. And the family car, which is a Saturn Outlook, which we bought new. And just because we both worked in home forever, it doesn't get any mileage. So still in great shape so we've got all these cars so the consensus was well the BMW's got to go and by then I had 375,000 kilometers on it and uh, it was time to let it go but man that car was so reliable and fun to drive it was one of those cars that uh, was really not, not fun to drive at all if you're just putting and putting around because the steering was a little heavy and uh, it didn't feel really good but when you got it going it just came alive and everything started to feel really good it was all really nice harmony and you could slam it around into four wheel drifts and uh, my little my kids were little then and they grew up in the back seat in their kitty bucket seats going to daycare sideways in the snow <laughs> they used to love it Whee! <laughs> as you could you know you could go a whole block sideways go around a corner get it into a nice drift and then just keep going sideways and they'd be looking out the side window one way or the other <laughs> yeah they, uh, they went two different ways with it the younger one doesn't want to drive and my older one is an excellent driver. And she started driving when she was 14 with the uh, learner's permit. And uh, she's driving the Jimmy to this day. Like that uh, Jimmy, I've put a lot of parts into it. Like I've done a lot of work to it. But uh, the body's in such good shape. It's worth keeping. And uh, She's not adverse to getting the back end out a little bit in the snow with uh, when it's in two-wheel drive. <laughs> so she uh, got something out of that adventurous drives to daycare. But yeah, good little car. I miss it. I miss it. It was good times. Yeah, I'll put some pictures of it on. I'll have, I'll have to see if I can find some. I'm sure I got some. I'll put some on the... I have a, one channel on my Discord. is all things automotive. Or anything automotive, whatever. You can put whatever you want on there. I'll put it in there. Go straight. Well, we're, we're almost there. With all this blathering away, the trip is over almost. Five kilometers. Yeah, I think the only thing I had to do to that BMW is uh, I had to change the left rear half shaft because the uh, CV joints in it went. I changed the heater fan motor. I changed the starter and the slave cylinder for the clutch. At the roundabout, take the first exit. I took the exhaust off quite a few times and patched it up, <laughs> but I never replaced it. But yeah, that thing was just Take the exit now. dynamite. It didn't have all that CAN bus crazy computer system the new ones have. Okay, I think we're going to end up turning right right here.
In 50 feet, turn right. Yes. Well, that was a cool trip. Turn right. Arrived at destination. Okay. Right at the end. Okay, we can do that. I wonder which way should we do this? this how long is this trailer? Let's see. Well, it's a little long. I think, I think what we'll do is go this route. Aimed right at it. Oh, we got a thing over there, a bit more. Oh, a lot more. Where's that mirror? There it is. This is gonna work out too good. <laughs> oh, we had it. We'll just take that because we're in a hurry. Got to get this uh, video out, and I got a bunch of other stuff to do. I have to talk about that in another video. Various things that are going on in my real world that uh, are gonna take me away from some of this that I'm doing now. It's just kind of a bummer. Boy, we need fuel in this truck. Uh, what am I doing? Oh, <laughs> it's not my trailer. Kept pushing the uh, enter to unload. Oh, good payday. Nice. So, we uh, got some work to do on this truck. Ooh, look at that cra crazy parking job. But uh, it's getting there. I got to just finish this thing up and get her out the door and move on. But, uh, yeah, I, it's okay with just the red fenders on the back. It doesn't have to be the two-tone black and red. That was just getting impossible to find that dividing line between the, the two components because it's painted from above. And so that becomes a really fine line along the, you know, it's just silly that just the hours and hours I spent messing with it is gone. It's my bad <laughs> wasted time. Anyway, uh, take care, guys. We'll catch you on the next one, and uh, bye for now.